Hi! Welcome to Far Cry 4. We're having a look at all the signature weapons. This includes a couple from pre-order slash season pass, uh, but I'll note those accordingly. If I forget to uh, mention how to get one of the weapons, don't worry, check the description. Uh, there's information in there along with time codes to jump to uh, whichever one you're interested in. I won't necessarily do these in orders in order. <laughs> I'm going to jump around a little bit and it's a long video. It comes out at nearly 40 minutes, so you might want to grab a drink and a snack before we get started. Hit pause and come back. I'll be waiting. Now, my last signature weapon video got a lot of views and a lot of feedback. I didn't know the difference between a magazine or a clip. I called shotgun shells bullets. <laughs> Um, I've done a lot of reading since then. Knowledge is power. So uh, hopefully I won't make the same mistakes, but please do feel free to call me out if I do. And I'd love to hear what loadouts and weapons are your favourite, so uh, feel free to let me know. Without further ado, let's get started. First up, the Sixer. The old meets the new. This classic revolver now comes with modern day optics. And this weapon is painfully bad. It's available from the first store that you hit, uh, so you can get it pretty early on, but honestly, don't waste the money. Uh, I managed to get a very, very lucky headshot there. This guy was giving me some grief uh, here, and I switched outposts off to this, so there were some heavies. But honestly, the heavies aren't going to get taken down with this guy anyway. As the name implies, it's got six rounds in the, I want to say, chamber. Um, apologies if that's wrong, someone please correct me. But I'm going to stick with chamber. Uh, it's, <sighs> it's okay. If you've seen my last videos, you know I'm not a great shot with handguns. Uh, even at point blank, I miss pretty competitively. Um, but, I mean, it's not terrible. Of what I'm saying, it is. It's absolutely terrible. There is always a better choice for a sidearm than this thing. Um, it's not silenced or suppressed. Uh, the reload time is kind of painful. It uses a clip. Huh? See, I learned. Uh, there to put the rounds back in the chamber. Um, it's kind of underpowered, as you saw from the stats at the beginning. The reload time is pretty rubbish. The range is worse than useless. Uh, yeah, I just avoid this gun. Um, honestly, there's so many better, better, better choices. If you do the Blackwater Dragon Quest, you can get the uh, M79, the grenade launcher, which is just a lot of fun, uh, and that comes pretty early on. Anyway, next up, the HS-77. This is a modified M712 with a silencer extended magazine and optics for quicker handling to ensure you always shoot first and ask questions later. It's not bad at precision, the scopes are pretty decent. You can get some headshots off, as you can see from range, and the silencer means that you're probably not going to be detected. I've obviously blown cover almost immediately. And the larger magazine actually helps for the times when you're under pressure and invariably panic miss. I tend to panic sway. When I've got people shooting me, I'm like freaking out and snap firing. So having a larger magazine where I'm not having to constantly reload and be shot at at the same time while I'm not taking cover is kind of a boon. It doesn't do too bad damage, um, but because of the scope you're probably going to be wanting to line up headshots anyway. You can see here it's not too bad at all, and it'll fire as quickly as you can pull the trigger which is great, unlike the Sixer which doesn't fire quickly at all even if you're mashing the trigger like mad. But as you can see, it's got pretty decent stopping power, even a chest shot. We're in a North Island, I think this is um, Namboche Monastery outpost, I want to say. I could be wrong, but I'm just doing Outpost Master, so we've always got the same stuff to test against. Next up, the Sandman. This is a pre-order bonus. Uh, take the 1911 and rig it for stealth with a suppressor, optics and reworked guts to lend you the silent, accurate sidearm. This is quite good, it's got pretty decent stopping power. Uh, it's either a red dot sight or a reflex sight. I've never really understood the difference. Uh, I'm sure someone will explain it to me. I could look it up, but I'd love to hear from you guys. You can see it's pretty accurate for a headshot, and you can pin down a heavy pretty easily. It's got a bigger magazine, obviously, than the Sixer and the Cannon, so much like the HS-77. Um, you can take your time to line the shots up, and a headshot will come pretty easily. Uh, it's got not bad stopping power here. You can see, even from the hip, it will get a headshot relatively easily. I'm at endgame here, obviously, having unlocked all the signature weapons, so my skill tree's maxed, and shooting from the hip is greatly increased. Also, my reload times are increased, so when I time some reloads later, take that into account. Uh, but you'll see here, even kind of flailing around like that, I still managed to get that guy in the back. So the power on this is considerably better than the Sixer, so if your choices are this and the Sixer, take this every time, although obviously not everyone will have this. 
certainly not worth the price of the season pass alone and the season pass on Far Cry 3 was a little underwhelming in the end so you might want to hold out until you actually see if you haven't got it already to see uh, what they release that being said if you've got it pretty decent choice for early on in the game although expensive so you'll have to farm a little bit to save up the readies you can see here not going brilliantly against the heavy it's not going to be a great weapon to take down heavies but again this is the North Island so you should have better weapons by now anyway and far more useful choices than this yeah just got shot by a rocket and kind of gave up okay the cannon uh, you're going to get this for five hostage rescue quests and you can unlock this very early in the game for that reason five outposts pretty much this hostage rescues at almost all of them it's a 44 magnum with an extended barrel and an improved sight obviously it's not suppressed in any way but the sights the scope will allow you to get some pretty tasty headshots uh, from medium to short range and it's pretty much going to one shot most things too you'll see here one in the chest for these guys only six in the chamber but the reload is pretty quick and as you saw even for me six bullets enough to take down three guys anyway back at Lumse barracks uh, to see how it fares against the heavy and assuming you actually hit the guy you're going to be able to one or two shot them pretty easily and it'll one shot pretty much every other enemy no matter where you hit them uh, the accuracy really really quite good and even body shots um, well you'll see it'll take a couple of mag a couple of uh, clips clips <laughs> a couple of clips to down a heavy uh, but it's still very decent for a sidearm next up the rebel another sidearm adding a drum magazine to this modified a99 improves the need to continually reload making it a must for drivers looking to steer and shoot now this is quite a lot of fun although it's going to chew through your ammo at a ridiculous rate uh, the damage output is strong though you can see there it took down that guy very very quickly and because you're not having to reload constantly the headshot on the heavy he went down very quickly uh, and even though I forgot to reload you'll see body shots to this heavy here and then a reload and another half magazine full and he goes down so the damage output combined with the speed of um, bullets coming out of the thing means that it's a really really good handgun Unlocked by liberating 10 outposts, you're probably not going to get this until you're close to the North Island. Even so, uh, it's a good backup for when things go south if you uh, are comfortable not carrying a stealth weapon. You can see here, even firing from the hip, it's just going to tear through, guys. Uh, I tried to conserve my ammo towards the end to see if I could empty the outpost with just one set of ammo. I've got the maximum ammo bag here, but again, if you're only getting it after you've liberated 10 outposts, you're probably going to be close to... Uh, the max ammo bag anyway got a cheeky takedown from above as well but even shooting people in the chest only three or four rounds and they're gonna go down pretty quickly so overall a solid choice and a lot of fun used from a car now the Stormer a classic submachine gun with modern enhancements such as optics extended magazine harder hitting ammo and a recoil buffer well, everyone likes a recoil buffer. You get this by grabbing one propaganda poster. You can't really miss getting one propaganda poster, so you should be able to unlock this one pretty early. With the sights on it, it's not going to be the best for long range. It's going to be suited to short to medium range, but at that range, it's going to tear stuff apart here, you'll see. With such a big magazine as well, you're really going to be uh, running through ammo fast, but the upside is you're going to be ripping people apart really, really quickly. Uh, that being said, shooting from the hip, pretty accurate too. You can see here, it's pretty good at dishing out the damage very, very quickly. And it'll even take down a heavy at a pinch, you'll see here. And it'll keep them pinned down too, unless you get knocked to your feet like that. But body shots will take them down pretty convincingly, and headshots, not too many required. If this guy wasn't shooting at me, it might be a little better. <laughs> And again, uh, range, yeah, it's not going to work at range. Bring something else. Now, the shredder. You're going to need level 6 karma for the shredder. It's almost worth investing in the skill for karma boosts alone just to get this weapon. This is, without a doubt, my favorite weapon of the game. 
Uh, pretty much one shot will kill anything, and if it doesn't, like a heavy, the speed at which it spits bullets out is going to make everything a breeze. It's got a decent sized magazine, and the reload time is super fast, and of course you can carry 300 additional rounds if you've got the maxed out uh, ammo bag. Although I believe for that you're going to need snow leopards, so you're going to need to get to the North Island, but it's entirely possible to hit Karma level 6. If you just go hunting with a bow, uh, you get Karma for killing animals that way, and also just do all the Karma missions you come across honestly worth the detour. This is just such an incredible weapon. If not, I think after payback in the North Island you'll get access to the Vector um, ACP and this is just a modified version of that and you can fit it out but honestly a uh, really really great weapon. Hands down one of my favourite. As soon as I got it it just became a staple. Um, it's good at short range um, because you can just burst fire. Good at medium range because of the scope and if you're a little bit cheeky and accurate and don't panic too much it's actually not a terrible sniper weapon either. As you can see there it'll take out a heavy pretty comfortably. You're not going to be able to take out a vehicle with it. I've tried enough times that I know it's not possible and I think even I might subject you to some of that footage. But it's just so perfect for a running gun and it's completely suppressed too. You can shoot people when they're standing practically next to each other uh, and as long as they haven't seen it they won't notice at all. Um, I don't know what else to tell you about this except work on your karma to get it as soon as possible. And it even comes in red. What's not to love? And sorry about Rabbi Ray Rana. He was talking to me every time I played this outpost. Ridiculous. The Bull. Two bomb defusing quests are required. Defusal quests. I didn't find my first one until I hit Willis, uh, but this is an M133 shotgun with reflex sights, uh, an extended barrel, and a bit of extra damage. I also think it's silenced. And someone mentioned in my last video that they tended to use the Bull or a shotgun for hunting animals at point blank. I tend to use the Shredder for that. Um, but it takes down a wolf in one shot. Uh, so that's nice. And it also appears to be silenced. You can see here that uh, I shot that guy and the heavy was completely oblivious. Uh, from point blank it's going to take a couple of shots to take down a heavy. He's down there. From a little further away obviously they're spread on a shotgun. The pellet's spread out so it'll take a few more shots. Uh, four in total there. But then around the corner here uh, I take this guy out. Obviously the downside of any shotgun is that you're going to have to manually reload uh, and each shell has to go in individually. Which can be a bit of a pain because I tend to forget to reload these expecting it to be like a magazine and then find myself without any uh, shells ready to go and just being shot in the face which is not ideal. However it does send bodies flying which is a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> especially from point blank and sometimes it'll even send them flying sideways. Uh, but again, yeah, you see, having to reload can be a bit of a pain. So remember to reload and it could be okay. Personally, I think there's probably always better choices uh, than a shotgun. I tend to take a sniper, the shredder, a sidearm, and then whatever the mission has made me take. Anyway, next up, the stinger. For the stinger, you're going to need to get uh, two Pagan's Wrath convoys. This is a great thing to get early on. Pagan's Wrath con convoys come along super early and it's one of the best stealth sidearms early on. You can see it drops animals pretty quickly. The problem is it doesn't do a lot of damage from anything but very close range. That being said, no one's going to hear you when you use it, which is really good news. But you're really going to struggle taking down anything with any kind of armor, be it animals like bears, uh, although technically they don't have armor, they've got thick skin, rhinos, elephants, if you're killing elephants and that's your thing. Uh, it's much better as a stealth weapon. You'll see here, perfect for headshots uh, at medium to close range. So if you're hiding in the bushes or around a corner, um, it's really good. The large magazine size means you can spray and pray. So if you miss, you don't have to worry too much. And you can definitely keep stealthy. Uh, I didn't realize it was a sidearm when I first started using it, so I dismissed it pretty quickly. But having gone back and Jake Driver, thanks Jake, uh, pointed out that it was a sidearm. Uh, once I realized that, I actually got a lot more use out of it. Um, until the shredder came along, obviously. I try to vary up the weapon so that I'm not chewing through the same type of ammo on two weapons that I'm carrying at any one time. But yeah, close to medium range, pretty good stopping power, big magazine, suppressed, um, and really good from the hip too, and pretty quick to reload. So a really solid choice, and again, something you can access really early on, so I highly recommend it. Uh, the Pagan's Wrath Convoys, you can have a lot of fun with them, setting C4 charges perfectly lined up to detonate them all at once, mines, uh, the 
uh, the sidearm you get from Blackwater Dragon uh, will do a good job too. You can access it early like that. Next up, the Warrior. Uh, this is a modified AK-47 with optics and extended magazine and some extra punch to earn its name. This is acquired by getting two Royal Cargo Trucks and it's silenced as well. You can see I'm shooting over this guy's head and he's completely oblivious. And I just wanted to make sure it was the Warrior that I was actually using. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's not too bad in terms of accuracy. Decent at uh, short range, obviously. Medium, great. Uh, long range, a little trickier. And about four shots in the head will take down a heavy. It's fully automatic. Did I already say that? It is. <laughs> um, and so therefore, with combined with a large magazine and a relatively quick reload time, it's a pretty uh, versatile weapon if you've got no other choice, and certainly better than any AK you might want. And in missions where you've got to take an assault rifle uh, to kill commanders or animals, especially... Uh, ooh, what is it? Shadow Leopard, I think, you have to get with an assault rifle. It might be Sky Tiger, but this is a really good weapon to take along on that one. Um, just because it's doing a little bit more damage and it'll take them down that much more quickly, save you some health syringes. As you can see here, medium range, it's pretty decent. And the stopping power, a couple of bullets in the chest, even for people who've got body armor, it's going to take them down pretty comfortably. Shooting from the hip too, uh, really very good. Uh, it's not going to take out a truck, <laughs> even though I considered trying briefly. Uh, but it's got enough accuracy to take out dudes in trucks pretty easily. Next up, the Trooper. You'll need 20 Masks of Yalung for this. Uh, I'm going to put together a video that shows all the Masks of Yalung, but you know, whatever, you can probably find them. Most of them are relatively easy to find. Uh, two shots, three shots, uh, to take down a wolf. Uh, so not so much damage, and it's more of a carbine in that you have to pull the trigger each time you want to shoot. It's not fully automatic. Uh, but fully silenced, you can see I'm shooting over those guys' heads again, completely oblivious. Four shots in the head to a heavy here. Two, three four, well three and a half, uh, one shoulder shot, uh, and again great at point blank, obviously. The scope on it's really nice, it allows for um, medium to long range pretty effectively, and more or less an entire magazine in the chest of a heavy will take it down. The magazine size isn't great, uh, which is a problem, um, so given the effort required in the mask of your lung, I'd honestly recommend the trooper over this, wait this is the trooper, sorry, <laughs> the warrior. Uh, the Warrior. That's exactly what I mean. Of, of course, next up we're going to see the Bushman, and that's better still. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, solid choice. Does the job. Uh, and the silence is always good. Um, I tend to favour the silenced weapons. You'll see here I shoot this guy, and the other guy completely oblivious again. So really, really good. Uh, you can drop people pretty much next to each other with this. And the little upside down V definitely helps you line up those headshots reticle sized strong too. And pretty easy to land the headshots. I mean the fact that you can just keep pulling the trigger, I don't know what caused that to explode, the fact that you can just keep pulling the trigger and uh, it doesn't have too much recoil and recovers quite quickly. Makes it, I don't know, I, I used it for, I don't know, a couple of hours and actually really enjoyed it until I got the Bushman. And then eventually dumped the Bushman for the Shredder, obviously. Anyway, with that in mind, here is the Bushman. Now, you can get this from getting rank 10 in the arena. Doing this in the game itself is not much fun, it's kind of grindy, but there is a mobile app you can download and link to your Uplay account. Uh, and in the UK, so obviously I had to buy this on Uplay because it's not on Steam. Uh, and in about three hours I'd made it to level 10, just fiddling around on the app. Um, it's kind of fun, it's not a terrible app, it's um, mildly entertaining, it's sort of like a reverse tower defense a little bit. Um, yeah, it's weird but it's good. Uh, but the Bushman, um, not as good as I remember from Far Cry 3, but possibly just because there's better choices now. Uh, again, great at medium to long, uh, short to medium range, not too bad at medium to long. Completely silenced, you can see there I'm shooting over that guy's head and he has not a clue that I'm there. Pop that guy and the heavy is, again, hasn't got a clue. It's fully automatic, unlike the trooper, so you can completely unleash and a much larger magazine to boot. So it allows you to uh, be a little bit sloppy with your aiming and still have plenty of room for recovery. 
You're not going to be able to take out a truck with it unless you empty, presumably, your entire supply of ammo, but that's what molotovs and grenades and mines and C4 and rocket launchers and <laughs> grenade launchers are for. Um, but if you want a stealth weapon that's decent at uh, short to medium to kind of almost long range, this is not a bad choice at all. You can see there, and the um, fully automatic nature of it just makes it really, really pleasant to use. Personally, I prefer the Shredder. Uh, it does seem to do a little more damage. You can carry a little more ammo in the magazine, um, but certainly taking both of these would not be a bad choice at all. And again, shooting from the hip, remarkably powerful. And there's Ravi Ray Rana again. Okay, the 87. This is a sawn off version of the 1887. It's a sidearm that delivers higher damage and is perfect for firing from behind the wheel. Like all shotguns, this suffers from the problem, just like the Bushman, of uh, the reload. You're going to have to put in the shells one by one when you want to reload. So keep an eye on how many you've got uh, in the chamber or in reserve, I guess, at any time. Uh, it's not too bad at taking down heavies at point blank, uh, but then most things are. And it'll send the bodies flying in an equally spectacular way to the bull. There you go. <laughs> Sadly not silence though, so you are going to be making some noise. But as a sidearm, uh, it's not too bad. I personally prefer the grenade launcher or the stinger. Uh, just because my aim with the shotgun isn't great and actually shooting while driving with this doesn't seem like it would be a great idea because you're not going to have the range unless people are right up close and if they're right up close you can just go for a vehicle takedown honestly which is possibly one of the greatest skills in the game so much fun uh, there's a heavy there that I'll take down a little bit unless he takes me down <laughs> you can see three, three shots uh, and he drops so it really does have some punch in it and once you've got a decent ammo bag, you can carry enough ammo for it to be pretty useful. And because it's a sidearm, it's got incredible stopping power for a sidearm. So it means that you can go with a bow and still have something for backup should things go south, like you get mauled by a tiger or worse, a honey badger. By my reckoning, honey badgers have about the same health as a heavy, which seems ridiculous, but it's true, and they certainly do more damage. <laughs> Uh, anyway, you acquire this weapon with four Mohan Gale journals. Uh, you should be able to grab them pretty early on by the maps if you need to. Honestly, the maps are one of the best investments you can make in the game, certainly the chest maps, because uh, even though they're quite costly at the beginning, just the number of chests that you'll see lying around allow you to make money back very quickly. The Predator. A modified M700 with illuminated op optics, high capacity magazine and a slick paint scheme. This is available after four armed escort quests. Uh, again, one you can get pretty early. Armed escort quests come along quite uh, early, but it's not the best weapon in the world. You saw it'll take down most animals with uh, one or two shots, um, obviously apart from the really large game. And great for sniping. It's got sights on it too, so you can uh, change the zoom level with, at least on the gamepad, clicking the right stick. Up close, it's going to be pretty useless. And against heavies, you're not going to be able to one-shot them, even in the head. So it's particularly underpowered against armor. Uh, it's also not going to be your best weapon for running around up close like this when you're getting shot. The way to use this is to keep your distance. It's so amazingly silent. I can shoot this and the guy doesn't really have a clue where I am. He sees me a little bit, but that's only because I'm not ducked. And I shot him before he got up anyway. The best way to use this, as, as you'll see, is just to take everything out from a distance. It's kind of a cheap way to do an outpost, but it certainly works. Um, and the illuminated optics at night uh, will help outline people a little bit. Not significantly, though. You'll see down there, even one shot to the body uh, will do the job there. But you'll see here, one shot to the head, and then a miss. Oh, no, then another, sorry, then a hit. It was the other guy that I missed. Um, there. Uh, well, two shots for a heavy to the head, which is not ideal. You probably want better from a sniper rifle. The Z93, the SA50, and obviously the AMR will all one-shot heavies uh, much more comfortably. But, as you can see, you can really easily take down a... Um, 
outpost from afar with this. I'm trying to take down this heavy by shooting him in the body, uh, but because this armor penetration on this Predator is so bad, you can see I get through practically a whole magazine shooting him in the chest and, well, the groin area, <laughs> uh, without him really noticing. So in the end I just pop him one in the head to finish it up. And this, apart from the buzzsaw, was the only weapon that I actually comfortably finished the outpost with, and that's probably only because the alarm didn't go off. Yeah, you see, eventually I just gave up and went for one in his head. Here. Because it just wasn't going to happen. Ah, the AMR. Uh, this is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful weapon. 23 outposts are required to unlock this, um, but it's just ridiculous. No suppressor, but the single most powerful weapon in the game, shot by shot. Uh, you can see here three wolves with a single shot there. That was just after I got it when I was looking for something to fire. Obviously amazing at sniping. It's got uh, two levels of zoom, uh, both pretty powerful. But you're not going to make uh, much of a stealth approach with this. And things can get messy very quickly when you get spotted. That being said, if you can actually hit, it will take down almost anything in one shot. Uh, from, you know, rhinos to trucks to uh, anything else. It'll also shoot through walls. Uh, which is just amazing. It stands for anti-materiel rifle, uh, which I didn't know. So you'll see here, I managed to kill that guy through a wall, possibly two, like a wall and a floor. Uh, this guy is there, heavy, headshot a heavy through a wall, beautiful. So I mean it's really kind of, if you've got a hunting syringe, it's kind of ridiculous. You can see there I shoot this truck and for some reason it takes two shots. And I try it on a few different trucks up in the north and it seems to take two. Down in the south, however, I was just kind of, uh, this is just after I got it, one shot will blow it up. It'll blow up boats with one shot. Uh, it'll even take down, as you'll see here, elephants, as long as you get them in the head with a single shot, if that's your thing. Uh, but again, here in the North Island, for some reason, it's not taking down the trucks in just one shot. But such is life. Can't really see that guy through the smoke. There he is, there. <laughs> no scope through the smoke. That's the way to do it. Anyway, if you do activate a hunting syringe, um, you can start to have a lot of fun with it. You really don't want to be using it if people get close range, but you can just hide behind a wall and pretty much pick everyone off. You can even do trucks through walls here. Again, two shots to explode it for some reason, but there we are. One exploded truck through the wall. Next up, the driller. Now, the driller earns its name as the PKM signature weapon by adding penetrating rounds to the mix to rip through flesh and walls with equal ease. This is a pre-order bonus and available with the season pass, but as far as I can tell it's bugged. Um, it takes, what, I think three shots to take the wolf down? Two, three, and there we are. Yeah, three shots to take a wolf down, so not a huge amount of damage. The scope on it's pretty decent, although the sway that you're going to get is going to make it hard to get shots at long range. Um, and the reason I say it's bugged is because I just couldn't make it shoot through walls for love nor money, unlike the AMR. You'll see here, I'm shooting this guy, and it's definitely not going through the wall. Heavy, no joy either. It's just leaving decals in the wall there. I kind of shot through that wood, but really a six will shoot through that wood, to be honest. Uh, even here, uh, you'll see I try and shoot this guy through the stairs, and I'm pretty sure I've got a lot of weapons that will shoot quite comfortably through there. But this thing, I don't know what's wrong with it, but it doesn't shoot through walls as claimed. That being said, it's a large machine gun and LMG, so the magazine size is obviously huge, and we'll have a bit of fun looking at that in a minute. Um, because it's got such a huge magazine, you're going to hardly ever need to reload, uh, so you can just run around and shoot like crazy. You're going to have a hard time taking down a truck with it just because the amount of damage that it puts out uh, is not really considerable. Um, if it were armor-piercing, as the name or as the description implied, then it might have a bit more luck. If I'm wrong on that, let me know. Um, I think the recoil got in there. It may have got him through the wall. Hard to tell. Um, but yeah, as you saw, like certainly wasn't as effective as the AMR. And here again, I'm trying to shoot through the wall. I thought, well, maybe there's two walls going on here. Maybe there's that wall and then the wall that they're standing behind. So I'll get outside and try again. But no amount of trying allowed me to do that. That being said, LMGs are just a lot of fun. If you don't care about stealth, uh, you can just blast everything away. But there are better choices. Uh, here we go. Um, I was going to do empty the magazine to show you how long it took on a wolf attack me, but here we go. If you empty it all the way down, it's going to take some time. 
still going, she's still going. 14, 15. There we go. 18 seconds of shooting and I think a 5 second reload? Yeah, 5 second reload. Uh, so, not a bad weapon, all things considered. Next up, the Ripper. This makes a welcome return from Far Cry 3, and you'll see the damage output is considerably better than on the Driller. Uh, it's available after unlocking all four fortresses, so not available until quite late game. You can rush Pagan Min and Yuma's fortress if you want, but they're going to be tough if you haven't weakened them during story mode. That being said, uh, in Outpost Master I did okay. Um, with big grenade launchers and rocket launchers and stuff and just went for big old explosive damage. Uh, it's a lot of fun, it's got a decent sized magazine again since it's an LMG and because of the damage that it does compared to the driller um, it'll take stuff down a lot more efficiently with a lot less ammo. The scope on it is also useful um, but then all the signature LMGs have scopes this time which is actually really nice. Uh, it's not going to be silenced in any way, obviously. Guys are going to hear you, but a one shot to the body uh, there, and you can see here it takes down two heavies in a row without too much trouble. Uh, there's a little bit of recoil, so it's going to shake around, um, but with the same scope as the Huntsman, it's actually very, very decent for medium to long range. It's obviously not going to compete with a sniper rifle, uh, especially because of the sway, but you can have a lot of fun with this. And again, comes in red, so what's not to love? Uh, shooting from the hip, equally effective, uh, as you'd expect with most LMGs. The huge magazine size just lets you kind of spray, and not even pray. Just spray and be sure. Uh, you're going to struggle to take out a truck, although an entire magazine will just about do the job. Sorry, not an entire magazine. Well, you'll see here. <laughs> Assuming a wolf doesn't get you. Honestly, every time I try to empty a magazine, something attacks me. There you go. So about two-thirds of a magazine will drop a truck. Again, better ways to do it. Uh, would have been much quicker to Molotov or grenade those guys. But it does allow you to shoot very, very quickly and just deal with stuff. Especially here, like these guys are in a line just shooting from the hip and they all go down very, very quickly. And as you've seen, like, no real need to reload. Super efficient weapon. And again, if you don't care about stealth, take an LNG. How long does it shoot for? Uh, well, I would have told you, but something exploded on me this time. I think it was a mortar, but I'm not sure why I was being mortared. <laughs> Very weird. Couldn't work out what that was. Anyway, here, you'll see. Uh, emptying the magazine takes a little bit longer. The last one was 18 seconds, I think we agreed. <laughs> There's something very pleasing about doing this. This one up to 20. And a reload time of 4 seconds. Now I've got Longinus's reload upgrade, so times may vary for you. Uh, next up, the Buzzsaw. Now the Buzzsaw. This is available after getting all 17 bell towers. And it, I mean, the, the AMR's overpowered. This is stupid. I mean, this is game breaking overpowered. Uh, it's really hard just to take one shot. There's a slight delay when you hit fire. The scope allows you to uh, get some pretty decent headshots off. And even if you don't get a headshot, um, the speed at which it'll take stuff down, I mean, like half, what, four or five rounds to drop a heavy. Um, look at the size of the magazine. I mean, come on. It carries like twice as many bullets as uh, the Ripper or the Driller, sorry. Uh, it doesn't shoot through walls, thought I'd have a go just in case they'd mixed up the description somehow. Um, but again, like a single headshot for a heavy. Uh, it's, I mean, it's fun. It's a lot of fun just to run around and destroy stuff. But it really does make almost every challenge in the game entirely trivial. I used it to clean up my last couple of outposts and almost felt like I was cheating a little bit. Like the Shredder, uh, the Shredder's amazing. Uh, it's super overpowered, but it at least feels like it's still a challenge. Uh, I actually ended up downgrading from the Shredder uh, to the Vector at one point um, just because it did a little less damage, shot a little less quickly. This, um, don't rush the Bell Towers just to get it. It's, I mean, you can see uh, even just a few rounds is going to blow up a truck pretty easily and you're not even going to have to reload. I mean, it's used <laughs> nothing. 
Uh, I managed to clip that truck as well, I think, just about. But then something blew up near me, don't know what. That being said, you're going to have a huge grin on your face the entire time you use it. There is nothing not to like about this gun apart from the fact that it's just so overpowered you won't be challenged at all. Uh, you you might take a bit of damage, but some body armor, a blue syringe, and um, you know the the one that lets you dodge bullets, um, and this, and you can take on any challenge in the game without really noticing. And you'll see there it flashed up that I was just finishing the outpost. As I said, I think that and the predator were the only two I finished it with without really trying. Uh, the ridiculous magazine size lets you shoot forever pretty much. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're just past the realms of all reasonableness. I know that's not a word, but I'm using it. 27 seconds of solid shooting with a 5 second reload. Um, and again, Longinus's skill is helping me improve that, but still, I mean, just insane. The Elephant Gun. Uh, this is a pre-order bonus and can be unlocked, unlocked with the Season Pass. It's a large gun that lives up to its name, and strangely it uses sniper rifle ammo. Uh, and it will, in fact, take down an elephant, as long as you shoot it in the head. There we go. If you shoot the elephant in the back, uh, not so much. Um, like hunting shotguns, uh, I love the gold work on it. It almost reminds me of uh, some of the Borderlands purple weapons. Uh, and while I was looking, I found an eagle that had run off with a monkey. thought you'd like to see that. Uh, anyway, you need to be a little bit careful about your aiming. I was trying to drop down to shoot that heavy and failed, so that guy saw me. But at point blank, two rounds are going to take a heavy down. Uh, possibly even one, it's possible that first shot missed. And the bodies are going to go flying, you're going to see the body dropping there. But for me, not the best choice. I used it early on as a stopping weapon for any beasts, well, honey badgers specifically, that I came across. But it's got a high chance of leaving a damaged skin. Uh, just due to the nature of uh, well, the gun, I guess. Um, but when I get panicked, when I'm in a close firefight, I tend to sway, which is why I like things like the Shredder and the Bushman, because they give me uh, recovery opportunities. If I miss with the first few rounds, it's not the end of the world. With this, if you miss with either round, you're going to have to spend at least as long reloading as you were shooting, and for me, it's entirely likely that you'll die. If you're better with shotguns than I am, then this is not a bad choice. And certainly early game, if you've uh, pre-ordered, it's just an incredible weapon. I, I think I got mortared there, I don't know what happened. Um, it's an incredible choice just to protect you from anything. Um, you know, heavies, rhinos, uh, yeah, anything. Very, very, very strong. Uh, but yeah, you see, if you miss, it can leave you in a spot of bother. Um, obviously much better at short to medium range, but actually not too bad at the far end of medium range either. Shooting speed, uh, if you get the timing right, bop, bop, you can shoot quite quickly. And because you reload both shells at the same time, uh, it can help. Now the harpoon. As the description says, a highly impractical weapon, but it never fails to satisfy. Uh, it's single shot, it's a pre-order bonus, you get it from uh, completing all the Herc missions, it'll just appear in the shop, signature weapons, and it's really only good at short to medium range, and even medium's a bit of a stretch. Uh, but it will one-shot most things. Lining up headshots is a little bit tricky, it tends to pull to the left or right a little bit, uh, but it will send bodies flying. You'll see there, that guy went quite some distance, I get an even better one in a second. Uh, like bows um, and bolts, or arrows and bolts I should say, you can run over the corpse or loot the corpse to get the ammo back, but if you get into pressure, the slow reload time combined with the ease at which you can miss your target is going to make it pretty tricky. Uh, it's a lot of fun with hunting. Um, but also a lot of fun to use on heavies, to drop them in one. Um, but yeah, under pressure in a tight firefight, not the best weapon. I think that's probably the furthest headshot I've ever got with this. You'll see on this one, I think I start to miss now. He pops his head up, but no bones. So yeah, it's really easy for it to swing to the left or right. There we go another shot, but pretty much, as I said, it will one-shot anything. Rhinos and elephants, it's going to take a couple of shots, and we'll have a look at that in a second. 
after having a look at this. This guy up here on the gun, skaboosh! He goes flying. It's essentially, if you shoot from underneath, it's going to follow the arc of the weapon and send these guys absolutely miles. Well, not miles, but certainly, you know, tens of meters. Uh, there's a stag here, uh, Sambar. Uh, and again, shooting downhill will have largely the same as effect from shooting uh, from underneath. And I sent that thing into the water. I didn't even bother to go and try and skin it. Uh, there's a rhino here. I don't quite get it in the head. I get it in the neck. But a second shot uh, takes it down. And typically it's about two shots for a rhino. Um, it tends to also leave undamaged skin. So if you want to use it for hunting, there's a lot worse choices. It's kind of fun. Um, honourable mentions for regular weapons. The MP5, uh, which I think you get after payback, is a lot of fun. The Vector also. The SA-50 sniper rifle, another one from payback. Uh, this is a great alternative to the AMR and the Predator, and in fact a great upgrade from the Z93. It shoots a lot faster. Uh, it's got a decent zoom on it if you buy the most expensive scope. Uh, you'll see here it shoots doof, 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 so you're not stuck with that slow reload and it will one shot almost anything as long as you get them in the head. Uh, the GLA87 grenade launcher, another great one. Chinese made automatic grenade launcher, the power of an artillery strike, uh, artillery strike in a handheld package. This unlocks as part of the quest line, I honestly can't remember when, it might be payback, it might actually be earlier, I feel like I had it before I got to the North Island. Um, it carries eight rounds in, I don't know, I guess it's some sort of magazine. And fires very, very quickly. It's really a nice alternative. Um, you've also got Longinus's weapon for completing all four of his quests. There's a rocket launcher that you can upgrade with a laser-guided scope. I hadn't realised you could upgrade it with a scope, having not read the description until I made this. Um, I was going to mention it anyway, and obviously you can paint it whatever colour you like. But targeting anything metal, uh, and you'll get this lock symbol. Wait for the lock to appear. And as long as you don't get attacked by an eagle, you'll see the thing explode in glory. Uh, great against helicopters. Sadly, it won't lock on to the eagles themselves, which is a crying shame. Finally, the M79. This is a sidearm grenade launcher, great for driving. It allows you to pretty much, pretty much obliterate anything that comes near you while you're driving. Really, really useful. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Do let me know in the comments uh, what your favourite loadouts are. Um, and choose your next adventure wisely. On the left are uh, all three of Pagan Min's endings, and on the right where you can find Paul de Pleur at the end of the game. Uh, I hope that was useful. I'll see you in the next video. I'm going to go and get a drink of water. Lots of love, bye! Oh, and Merry Christmas!